We are now starting the third chapter of Math 5, which means we're going to learn about matrices, which means we have a bunch of definitions to do to get started. So let's begin with our definitions of matrices and vectors. So the first one is that an M by N matrix means a rectangular grid of numbers with M rows and N columns. Now it's important to get those the right way around. So the first number here, the M, is how many rows you've got and the second number is how many columns. So if we take a couple of examples, this right here would be an example of a two by two matrix because it has two rows and three columns. On the other hand, this thing here would be a two by three matrix because it has two rows, which we usually label as one, two, like this, and three columns. So column number one, column number two, and column number three. In Math 5, we'll regard vectors as being special cases of matrices. So a height M column vector just means an M by one matrix. So a matrix with M rows and just one column. And a width N row vector will be a one by N matrix, uh, a matrix with one row and N columns. So some examples here, we have a two by one column vector and here we have a one by three row vector. And there is some notation that we use for the collection of all column vectors with entries belonging to a particular set of numbers. So we will write R to the N like this to mean all of the all height N column vectors. with real numbers as entries. So that is the set of all height n column vectors. And similarly, from time to time, we'll think about vectors with complex number entries, and c to the n would mean the set of all height n column vectors with complex number entries. Okay, finally, there's one special matrix which we often think about, or one family of special matrices, uh, which we write like this. So this, the M by N zero matrix is the M by N matrix, all of whose entries are zero. And we write it as a bold zero with a subscript saying what size it is. So zero subscript two by two would be the two by two zero matrix, which we've written uh, at the bottom just here. There is the two by two zero matrix. Okay, so we also have some vocabulary for referring to particular entries of a given matrix. When we say the ij entry of a matrix, that means the number in row i and column j. And again, it's super important to get these the right way round. So the first number, the i, tells you which row you're looking at, and the second number, the j, tells you which column you're looking at. And that can be a bit confusing if you're th used to thinking about things like x coordinates and y coordinates. So if we talk about x and y coordinates, then x tells you how far to go across and y tells you how far to go up usually. But when we talk about the ij entry, the first number, the i, tells you how far to go down and the second number tells you how to go how far to go across. So let's label the rows and columns of this example matrix here. So row one and row two and then column one column two and column three. And for example, if I take this entry here, this um, this entry here is the one, two entry, the entry in row one and column two. And on the other hand, if we look at this entry here, that would be the two, one entry. It is the entry in row two and column one. So you've got to get those the right way around, otherwise you'll have the wrong uh, wrong answers when you when you try and figure out which entry is which. So we also have some general notation that we use to talk about um, arbitrary matrices. So when we write something like this, what we mean is that A is a matrix whose ij entry is little a subscript ij. And that kind of notation is really useful when we want to talk about a general matrix, an arbitrary matrix. For example, if we want to prove something is true about all matrices with a particular size, then we might use that notation to do that. So as an example for that matrix, uh, for that notation, if we were talking about two by two matrices, 
then we might write uh, a is equal to little a subscript ij to mean that a was a matrix which looked like this. So you can see here the 1, 1 entry was a subscript 1, 1. And the 2, 1 entry, the entry in row 2 and column 1, would be a subscript 2, 1. So what is this? The 2, 1 entry. All right, so we'll use that notation all the time as well. We also want to talk about the rows and the columns of a particular matrix. And again, I'd like to just fix the notation to make sure everybody is clear what we're talking about when we do this. So let's suppose we have an M by N matrix here. So this is M by N. Then if we're using this notation where A is a matrix whose IJ entry is A subscript IJ, then um, that's what this thing would look like. That's what this arbitrary M by N matrix would look like. And when I talk about, for example, the first row, so the first row would be this row here. And you can see it consists of the entries A11, A12, A13, up to A1n. So all of the entries Aij, where i is equal to 1. In general, the ith row of A would be the 1 by n row vector whose entries are AI1 and AI2 and AI3 up to AIN. So in our example up here, I highlighted the first row and the entries were A11, A12 up to A1N and that's a 1 by N row vector. On the other hand, if we wanted to talk about the columns of a matrix, then the columns of our N by N matrix would be M by 1 row vectors. And if we look at, let's take the first column of this matrix. So let's just get this working. Let's look at the first column. The first column will be this one here. And the first column would consist of all the entries whose, um, so A11, A21, A31, down to AM1. So all the entries Aij, where J is equal to 1. And in general, the Jth column would be the M by 1. Uh, I'm not sure why I write, wrote row vector there. Let's just correct this. Column. It's an m by 1 column vector. And the jth column would be the m by 1 column vector where the entries were a1j, a2j, a3j, down to amj. So let's just um, make this a bit more concrete. Look at an example. Let's say we had a was 1, 2, 3, 4, this 2 by 2 vector here. Then the second row would be the uh, 1 by 2 row vector 3, 4 and the second column would be the one by uh, the 2 by 1 column vector whose entries were 2 and 4 like this. All right, so that's what we mean when we talk about the rows and columns of a particular matrix. They will be certain row and column vectors. Now, of course, we don't just um, look at vectors. We do things with them. And the most basic things that we can do with, uh, with vectors is we can add them and we can multiply them by numbers. So when you have two matrices of the same size, then we add them by adding the corresponding entries. So for example, if you want to add the 2 by 2 vector the 2 by 2 matrix whose entries are 1 2 in the first row and 3 4 in the second row and you want to add that to the 2 by 2 matrix whose entries are 5 6 7 8 going from left to right and top to bottom then to do that you just add the corresponding entries so you get another matrix of the same size and the first entry the 1 1 entry will be 1 plus 5 the 1 2 entry will be 2 plus 6 2 1 entry will be 3 plus 7 and the 2 2 entry would be 4 plus 8 so if we work those out what we've got is 6 8 10 12 like this so we only add matrices which have the same size and when we add two matrices of the same size we just add the corresponding entries in the normal way and we also do a thing called scalar multiplication which is when we multiply a matrix by a number 
Uh, when we do this, we call the number we're multiplying by a scalar, and we talk about scalar multiplication. But again, all we do is that we multiply the entries, so each entry in the matrix, by this number we're scalar multiplying by. So here, we're multiplying into a 2 by 3 matrix, and the answer will be another 2 by 3 matrix, and we'll have 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3 in the top row, and 2 times 4, 2 times 5, 2 times 6 in the next row, so that gives us 2, 4, 6, and 8, 10, 12. Okay, so now we can do matrix addition. We can add matrices of the same size, and we can do matrix scalar multiplication. So that's when you multiply all the entries in a particular matrix by the same number. And there are some nice identities which link addition and scalar multiplication, and which addition and scalar multiplication obey. And those are identities which just come from the ordinary rules for multiplying and adding uh, real numbers or complex numbers. So because matrix addition is done entry by entry, and because matrix scalar multiplication is done entry by entry, we get a bunch of identities, a bunch of laws for doing matrix addition and matrix scalar multiplication, which just come because the same laws apply for ordinary addition or multiplication of real numbers or complex numbers. So first of all, matrix addition is commutative. If you've got two matrices of the same size, A and B, then A plus B will be equal to B plus A. And that just follows because the same thing is true when you add two real numbers or two complex numbers. Similarly, uh, this is the fourth time we've met the associativity property. Matrix uh, addition is associative. So A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C whenever A and B and C are matrices of the same size. Then we have distributivity laws for scalar multiplying a matrix by a scalar and scalar multiplying a scalar into a sum of two matrices. And finally, we have a kind of associativity rule for doing scalar multiplication. So if you've got two numbers, A and B, and you multiply those, scalar multiply them into a matrix A, then if you do A times B, so you multiply the scalars and then you multiply that into the matrix, that's the same as multiplying B into A and then multiplying the whole lot by uh, lowercase a. So there are some nice, um, nice identities here connecting matrix addition and scalar multiplication.